Hello everyone and welcome back to another Wizard 101 video. Earlier in my Discord server, I'm going through the video ideas, someone asked, Noah, do you have a training point guide? And I was like, you know, I definitely do. I've done it at some point, but when did I do it? And I was looking through my videos and I was like, oh, I haven't done one for the last two years. So you know what? Today I'm going to do a training point guide. I haven't done a guide video in a hot minute. But today will be the training point guide going over what I think are the necessities for actually questing through the game, getting through the game, just having a good time overall and what to spend your training points on. Now, I would like to say I have an excess amount of training points. I always have and I always will. You may see that I only have five left. Well, the reason why I have five left is because I have all the polymorph spells so I could get the Master of Shapes badge. So... After following this guide, you're probably going to have like 15, 20 left over if you're a really high level. If you're a low level, obviously you probably won't have as much, but we'll get into that. I'm going to divide this into sections and you'll see what I mean by that later. But without further ado, let's get into it. Starting off, we're going to have the Ravenwood section of this video. This is all the spells you can get in Ravenwood that are going to be pretty good for training points. So first off, and the first thing I would recommend anyone spend their training points on and tech into is the death spells. The reason for this is, is that at level 26, you can get faint and faint is going to be your best friend. It's going to be one of the best spells in this game and you're going to want to use it against most bosses as just any low level and high level. So really, it's definitely worth training and I would recommend just going all in on the death spells up until you get faint and then you can start worrying about other things so you're gonna you know come to malorn ashthorn he doesn't actually teach you faint you're gonna have to go to dwargan once you unlock the death school but it's always worth it to train up to faint again level 26 death spell really easy to get as for other things in ravenwood there's only two things i would recommend and this is really dependent on you First off, if you play more defensively, it might be worth it to train up to Tower Shield and Ice. I know that I did at some point, I don't remember why, but it could be worth it. It's a really good 0 pip, minus 50 to next spell, so if you're having trouble with a boss that has a damage cheat, this could be a good method to counter that. I personally wouldn't recommend it on every video, but if you decide... I personally couldn't recommend it for every fight, but if you decide that, you know, you want to play a bit more defensively, that is the way to go. The only other thing I would recommend from Ravenwood would be if you have a life mastery amulet and you're a different school to train up to Seder in life because Seder is really good. It's 860 health for four pips, really just a really solid spell. And you definitely are going to want it if you want to heal. Obviously, realistically, I would say make sure you have a life mastery. A life mastery will be really good for this. But that could be something to put your training points into. So that's really it for the Ravenwood spells. I don't think there's anything too much else that you want to train up. Really, there's nothing in, say, Fire, Storm. You don't really want to train those. And I will say, and then while I'm walking to the next area, don't spec into a secondary school. I know that for some reason, this is a common misconception for new players and at a low level. People really want to train into a second school and use that, but it's just really not worth it. It's a waste of training points, and especially once you get above two pips, it's really just not worth training into that secondary school. It is up to you, but again, I would say it's just not worth it overall. I would just recommend training the specific things I'm going for. Next up, we have this right here in Colossus Boulevard. This is a secret kind of hidden trainer right here next to Mindy Pixie Crown. You come in here and Mildred Farseer is just chilling here as a witch. This will be pretty important for a few things. First off, if you're a life and you don't know how to get life trap, this is how you get life trap. But for everyone else, there is reshuffle, which can be extremely useful to train just in case you're in a big fight. You want, might want to pack it just to reshuffle your cards. I would definitely recommend this for maybe like the final boss in Lemuria or Darkmoor or really just any fight where you could potentially see some difficulty. So definitely train reshuffle. In fact, I'm going to train reshuffle now. I didn't realize I hadn't trained it. She also has the dispels if you want to train one of those. I know this is a really useful strategy for like Rattlebone's Exalted duels with, I don't know if it's strangle or if it's dissipate one of the two or maybe it's melt basically he does this cheat and you want to dispel it with dispels 
really they can be extremely useful and I would definitely recommend actually training some especially I know that storm ice and death tend to come in handy sometimes balance does as well um, but really they can be extremely useful if you just want to spend some training points there for the next section of spells you want to train and these are definitely useful is to come to Niles here in Krakatopia by the Krakus Sphinx and train up Elemental Blade, Elemental Trap, or Spirit Trap, Spirit Blade, whichever one you are. And realistically, at a high level, you might even want to train up both because you can use it as a support character to support different people. I would definitely recommend training up the blades for both of them. Like, I know that I use the blades quite frequently um, on other people when I do support. Definitely a really good idea to have these, and they're just really solid blades plus 35 to all the schools especially if you're like a balance or something and you know it, it's just a it's just a solid idea not gonna lie all right so now we're getting into astro magic and astro magic is definitely where you're gonna start using a lot of training points up until this point and once you actually reach celestia you're probably gonna have an excess amount of training points if you only spec into a few things like i know usually i only spec into faint and then by the time i get to celestia i have a lot of training points to spend so what do you want to get from celestia well completely ignore the moon school trainer you definitely don't want polymorphs polymorphs are really bad the only reason why i've trained polymorphs again is for the master of shapes badge at some point when it's free point reset, I might reset my points. But as for what you might want to train, Star School, I would also recommend uh, ignoring for now. Go away, Opti. I would also recommend ignoring for now. Ah, why are you guys crashing my video? I would recommend ignoring the Star School for now, but for Sun School, and I don't actually know if they have it at this trainer, you want to train up to Monstrous and then Gargantuan. You can get Gargantuan at level 58, but I don't believe you can get it from that base trainer over there. You have to come to the Floating Land and then pass, what's his name, Pierce Stanson or something? Yes, it is Pierce Stanson. I am the master of knowledge in this game. I'm basically an, a walking encyclopedia. You come up here to the Sun School trainer, and you can train up to Gargantuan from here. So that is the last variation that you can train naturally, again, at level 58. Definitely would recommend using your points on this, but I don't recommend any of these other schools. You're definitely going to want to train up those because really that extra damage with the enchant is going to be super useful. Next up, and this is how to get Colossal, which you're definitely going to want to get, and potentially also get Berserk, which can be good. I don't really prefer it. I just like waiting until I get to Azteca, but definitely um, you can get it here, is to come up to Inyanga White Stripes and do his side quests at certain, like, like at later levels. I believe it's like level 60 something, 68, something like that. But the quest is called Bungle in the Jungle. And basically you go to Drum Jungle and talk to, uh, what's her name there? And basically she will walk you through the quest and you get the next Sun School Obelisk, which gets you Colossal which is a really useful spell, plus 275. You're going to be using this all the way up until you get Epic in Arcanum. Really just a solid spell and pretty good. Next up, and these are going to be a bit rough, so do keep that in mind and be ready to solo some bosses. You're going to want to do the different astral training spells from Azteca here. So if you didn't know, basically you do the Zafaria training spells and then you can come here to Pascal over here. You have a few quests. I forget exactly what they're called, but you can tell that they're astral quests. It's just, it's not this one, whatever this one. Okay, it's not Stu on this. It's something about stars, something about moon, astral days or something like that. But basically you do those and you want to do the sun school over here, which you can see I don't have, or I have most of the spells already trained, but the sun school is really important because it gets sharpened blade and potent trap which is very useful for blade stacking and faint stacking. If you don't know, you can, a sharpened blade is a different variation of a normal blade and both count. So you want to use sharpened blade than a regular blade. It's why I, my deck setups are always like this. And then obviously potent trap leads to faint stacking, really just a solid strategy. And you're, if you're a life, you want to get primordial here and from the sun school trainer. And then you have the star school trainer where you have your variation of the star school spell. All right, now we're coming up to the final area of this video. And real quick, I would just like to briefly mention shadow spells. Personally, I would train shadow strike just because there are some battles where that pierce will come in very, like very much come in handy. So definitely 
you want to train that up just in case, but I really don't use any other shadow spells. I don't think I've ever used another shadow spell. So definitely you want to train that up as for shadow spells. The last thing you want to train is to come here to the astral school in the Arcanum at level 100, 110 and come to the astral trainer he has quite a few things that'll be pretty useful like potentially if you're life you could use you can get mend you can get primordial and then uh, radical which are really useful and then you also have epic which is the plus 300 version of an enchant and finally frenzy i believe this is where you get frenzy i could be wrong but either way train up frenzy at some point just in case that's really it for training points i really don't spend training points on anything else besides this that's really it for today let me know if i somehow missed anything i think this is really it for pve anything you would want to get for pve definitely um obviously there's probably some stuff for pvp that you might want to train up but i think that's really it let me know again if i did miss anything but i think i got everything pretty well but thank you all for watching i will see you in the next video adios